Hi friends, welcome back to Genuine Core YouTube channel. This is another video in the Java IFX Library Management System Development Tutorial Series. So, in the last video, we have improved the overall look of the UI, and in this video, I'll be working on this renew submission section. Previously, we had a list view here for showing the information about book, uh, uh, to whom it is issued, the issued book details, and the date of issue, and all. In this uh, UI, in the latest upgrade, I will be designing a new way to represent this data as three blocks so for that i have already designed that ui look so uh, i will not be covering designing these three components here because these are just v boxes so if you look at this one this v box we have uh, text name holder member email holder and member contact holder along with an icon to describe that it is related to the person to whom the book is issued uh, then here the next we box represent the data or it just shows the data about the issued book and this shows the information about the uh, <coughs> when it is issued and number of days since it is issued and fine information overview uh, fine information so that's all so for in this video i'll be just copying these three b boxes i mean three h boxes and pasting your product so let's uh, <coughs> start working on this so uh, coming to the main section we have main.fxml so inside main.fxml uh, this is the current ui this is a bug actually in scene builder it uh, when we open that it will show this default uh, uh, white background color so in, in order to change that i have to update the UI so I am just setting submission to submission then coming back to submission so now it is black then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the previously copied hbox so that hbox is okay now we have to decide where we are placing it so we have a tab for renew submission option inside that we have a the anchor pane right yeah this anchor pane is there then we have a border pane there uh, and in this border pane we have a jfx text field here which is the center book id option so we can put that in the center so it will grow and gives us a responsive ui now one more thing that i have to do is i have to uh, increase the uh, margin between these components because they are kind of uh, too close so let's put that to 20 uh, I think 20 is enough. Yes, that's very good. Then in the bottom position, it looks okay. Now one uh, thing I uh, another thing I have to do is uh, I have to set the text alignment for this letter. So in the previous video, we have done the uh, alignment things and uh, I mean the label based things. These are not labels, and so these are text. So for this text, we have to set the text alignment to center. So coming back to dark theme dot CSS our CSS file. So let me, uh, let me make sure it's, it's dark green or CSS. Then we have main text. We created this in the last video. So here I am going to add one more entry FX text alignment. And I am going to put that in the center. So FX text alignment should be center. So now it is in center. Now I can close this, I think. I do not say okay. So uh, that part is okay. Then we can add some styling to these V boxes, right? Yeah. Uh, we can change the color to uh, show it as a card or something. So for that, I am going to create one more CSS class here. So that will be uh, submission container. So here, instead of submission container, I am going to set the background color FX background color, and I am going to derive from. Uh, my primary color just like we did before so fx primary i need a 20 percentage maybe 10 will do 10 percentage lighter background so that uh, now i will set that to this uh, v boxes so coming to the property section <coughs> here uh, we have special paint uh, instead of that i'm going to set a submission container so Submission container. What about this? This is special page to the submission container. I mean that special. Uh, uh, I mean the default value was special page. Uh, I created this special page class in the shadow branch. That's why it is there. I am going to change that into submission controller. So now we got three card like things, uh, card like V boxes, and uh, I think that's okay. 
I have to give an ID for these nine components. So it is going to take a little while. So I will post the video and once I complete, I will come back. I have completed giving uh, names for this variable. So this is fine holder, fine info holder, number of days holder, etc. For all these nine variables, I mean for nine components, I have gave this FX ID so that I can use them from the program. So let's come back to the program and right click on main or FXML and create the controller. So once that's complete, you can see we got all the variables, member name, control, member email holder for the sake of uh, Clarity, let me cut this and put it right here. So every FXML components will be grouped together. I think that is better to see. Now, <coughs> the, uh, now let us just run the program to see whether the UI is populated correctly. So it's GC root. Then coming back here, we have these nine components. And what I am going to do is when we type book ID here b101 or anything then we have to inflate these fields these nine fields with the corresponding data so definitely uh, previously we had this option using list view so previously i was using this method called load book information too what i was doing is i was creating an observable list and adding those entries as strings into this observable list then attaching this list to a uh, list view so the problem with the previous approach was I was first fetching book data from the table called the issue. I mean uh, the issue data from the issue table. Then using that information, I was making another query and fetching data from book. Then you, uh, from the data I obtained from issue, which is member ID, I was querying another table called the member to fetch member information. This is very inefficient. I mean, every database query takes some time. I mean, in our library software, it, it will take only a fraction of time. But when we do programming in a larger environment, this uh, means a lot. So you can't just query everything one by one. So it is always better to group the data that you want and fetch at once. So there will be only one connection initiated, one connection termination. I mean, the core, uh, one uh, reduce the number of queries whenever possible. So in order to do that, and I, in order to illustrate that, I have prepared a query for you guys. So this is the combined query that fetches data from three tables. So let me explain this query first. So what I'm going to do is I am first selecting issue.book ID, issue.member ID, issue.issue time, and issue.renew count from the table. From which table? From the issue table. So from issue. Then using that issue, uh, I am adding a where clause here so that only that corresponding book that we type in this enter book ID section will be fetched. So only one row will be taken from this issue table. Then using this issue.book ID, I am fetching corresponding data from book title, book author, publisher and is available from the table book. So we are not making another query. We are querying this book information from the same query itself. Understood? So this is called a join operation in SQL. I hope you know about the join SQL. If you don't know, please go and search for left join or simply join. So it will show you how to join multiple tables and fetch data at once. If you have done any kind of database programming, I think you you are familiar with this because this is a very very important concept. So that's what's happening. Using this issue or book ID, whatever the ID it is, I am using this book ID information to fetch from book title uh, from the book table. So that connection is specified here. Left join book where issue dot book ID equals book dot ID. Similarly, I am fetching the member information using the member ID. So suppose uh, when I press B one zero one the book ID, I, I have another one member ID called one zero one member ID. So using that one zero one member ID, I am fetching data from the member table. So that's what is it is doing. So let us copy this query. And uh, let's uh, do the coding here. So here we have book ID dot get text. So we have book ID there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this thing for reference now. Then I'm going to create another string my query equals. Here I am going to paste it. So definitely it has to be within single quotes, just like before. No single quotes, double quotes. Sorry. So that's it. Uh, now we have this query. I'm going to create a prepared statement here because I have to set a 
variable here book id i don't want to fetch everything from every table i need only one row from each table corresponding to the uh, issued book id so uh, i am going to create a prepared statement so it's prepared statement oh, i can't create prepared statement right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a method there or simply i can set a uh, there are multiple ways to do this so i think i will give that book id here that will be better so single quotes plus <clears throat> i am going to give id here plus single quotes single quotes so i am doing this because i can simply call this execute query from here otherwise i have to create one more method in the database handler so for now this is not efficient way do not give like this but for now uh, it's okay so result set rs result set rs equals database handler dot execute query then i am going to give my query here so it will return a value called rs then there will be only one row anyway i am going to put that in a if case i mean uh, if case enough if rs dot next then we have to fetch all the data so it has to be in between try catch uh, i will add try catch in a moment so try catch exception then I will put it in the previous address. So far, so good. Now we have to fetch the data from here. So uh, I will keep the UI here for reference. So here, uh, first we need book name holder, book email holder, and book member contact information. So let's do that first. So what I'm going to do is member contact holder, email holder, name holder dot then i'm going to call the set text method and here we have to set the name so inside result set we can fetch that from string. and here let us look at the uh query so member data can be fetched as name from here so there is no other column called a name here in all these three tables there is no other column called a name so i can simply call it as name here so member name is okay then we have to repeat this for uh, not just name we have to fetch contact holder contact information then <coughs> email holder so member email holder and here we can simply give mobile and email so mobile and email so that part is okay member name information is fetched there is no more queries we can just fetch information about this book also so we need book name book author and book publisher so book name holder dot set text then we have to fetch data from this uh, result set so rs dot get string and we are going to fetch book name so here uh, a book name is title so i can fetch title then repeating this process for author and publisher so book author holder book publisher holder so book publisher holder then we have uh, instead of title we have to give author here then we have to give publisher here uh, i think i don't have to fetch book dot is available since uh, it is not available once it is uh, issued so we are not showing it that is explicitly known so that's it that part is okay then here coming back here we have issue date or a date and a number of days the user has kept the book with it so uh, that's what i'm going to do so issue date holder dot set text and here we have to give a date right yes we have to give a date so for that we have to fetch a timestamp from here so if you look at it here Previously, we fetched that using timestamp m issue time equals rs dot get timestamp. So we can use that method here. First, I am fetching the timestamp here. Now we have to pass this uh, m issue time into a date object so we can display it in a much better fashion. So date date of issue equals converting this timestamp into date is very simple. New date uh, m issue time dot 
get time just call get time method which will which will return it in a millisecond format so that using that millisecond format they can construct the date so that part is okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to date of issue dot to string so it will uh, show it in this format we can give our own specified uh, display option i mean like uh, the way it is displayed using symbol date format so for now i am just using date of issue dot to string so issue date holder is fine now we have to set number of days see uh, number of day number of days means current date minus the issued date so that can be uh, done easily very easily using this m issue timestamp and current time millisecond so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fetch two long time formats of time then converting that into days so watch this closely long time elapsed equals then i want to find the difference between current time and this m issue time so you can get the current time using system dot current time millis minus then you can convert this into milliseconds so m issue time dot get time so this will calculate the time difference between now and the issue date in milliseconds so we have to convert it into days so in the days elapsed equals time unit there is a class called time unit then i you can convert to any for any <coughs> matrix so currently i am converting to days so days dot convert then give the duration here so uh, it elapsed time elapsed is given and this elapsed is in the format of not in seconds but in milliseconds so from this milliseconds time it will convert it into days so i have to give long here it doesn't support integer so long days elapsed then i can give that value in n days old so n number of days folder dot set x then i can give days in apps value so it will automatically convert it to string so that's okay uh there is one more thing that d is capital so we have to change it so it is days elapsed so it is dates elapsed then here i have to convert that into string value so uh, days elapsed a lot to string will do the trick now there is one more entry yes definitely the fine holder so the overview amount uh, currently we are not supporting it but we will do that in the future so for now let us run our program and there is some errors here yeah definitely there is errors uh, these are not needed anymore so i am going to delete this there, there is ready for submission which we used in the previous logic so we have to put that right there it's ready for submission then what else let's me just uh, go through this course so there is nothing much more than that so let us uh, go to full screen control shift f control. so that's okay now let's run the program <coughs> so it is gc root then renew submission i am going to type b101 and yes, you can see that we got off all the information. Absolutely, jimmycorridor.com, my phone number, then origin, then the book information, and the issued date. It is November 4, and today is November 12. So there is seven completed days, and uh, we haven't supported, we are not supporting the uh, fine information yet. So I'm going to submit this book. Let's see how this works. Are you sure want to return this book? Yes, I want to book has been submitted yes now if i type b101 again we have to clear these entries right yes we have to clear these entries so uh, i will do that in the next video since this video has been too long we have to do something to hide this uh, i mean to clear this and uh, the clearing has to be done in this part also so we will take care of that in the next upcoming video so as always thank you for watching this video like the video if you like it and subscribe for more cool videos